Hmm. What rhymes with community? Well, there's... Did you guys hear? It's terrible! Derek is out for the rest of the season! Oh, no! Is he all right? He's fine. His mom just got an out-of-state transfer to be the national sales director of... Do you know what? That's not the point. The point is, our wrestling team is doomed now. Yeah. Derek was the school's best wrestler. No one else could do quarter Nelsons quite like him. It's a half Nelson. There aren't any smaller Nelsons than that. What? I wrestled at my old school. I kind of had to, you know, because of my dad. Your dad? Yeah, he was a legend. Three-time state champion. So people kind of expected me to wrestle, too. Well, people must have been so disappointed when you weren't any good at it, right? Uh, actually, I went undefeated last year. What? Then why haven't you gone out for the wrestling team here? Well, I... Oh, sorry, I have to take this. Hello? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. I do want to sign up. Thank you. I won't let you down. Uh, did Bert just say sign up? That must have been the wrestling coach begging Bert to join the team so he can fulfill his destiny. Now I see why Bert came to our school to save our wrestling team. You know what this calls for? A, a pep, pep rally! rally! Woo! I'm going to build a robot! My fellow middle schoolers, for too long, our school's wrestling team has done, well, terribly. We have a wrestling team? Yes! And now, we have someone who will turn it all around for us! An undefeated wrestler who will dominate our opponents! I give you the descendant of a great line of wrestlers, the master of the mat, the king of crunch, the one, the only, Bert! Bert isn't back here. What? Why not? He didn't sign up. But he said he was going to go sign up. What else would he sign up for? Hello, I'm Bert. And I've never uh, read my poems in front of people before. Um, this one is about my journey to here. It's called First Second Chances. <clears throat> Uprooted, replanted, a new place, home, space. Missing the old, the familiar, gone without a trace. But time passes, unveiling second chances all around me. New friends, new home, belonging in this welcoming church community. Wow, <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hallowed be your name. Hi, God, it's me, Gabe, but you already knew that. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Just wanted to thank you for another amazing day. Your, your will be done. Please watch over my parents and friends on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. And Mr. Spots, wherever it is, he's run away to. Give, Give us this day. day. Also, my baseball team has a game this week, and while I'm not asking for you to help us win, it would be great if you helped us live up to our full potential as athletes. And while I know that winning isn't everything. Gabe? What? Oh, sorry. Uh, the, the, this is the part where we ask God for bread, right? <laughs> we kind of stopped since you were adding those new words to the Lord's Prayer. Those words aren't part of the Lord's Prayer, Mimi. Gabe was going completely off script. No, I'm just inserting things into the Lord's Prayer I actually want to pray to God about. But it completely derailed our prayer. Yeah, only because you stopped. I was just slipping my prayer into all the natural pauses. Well, you kind of brought worship to a grinding halt. Uh, excuse us. Gabe, 
You can't just start saying whatever you want during the Lord's Prayer. Because it disrupts the service? No. Well, yes, but also because you should really be saying just the Lord's Prayer, the way Jesus told us to say it. Yeah, but Pastor Donna said that praying is how we communicate with God to form a relationship. So why wouldn't I use my own words? Well, because Jesus wants us to say his exact words, I guess. My dad says that the words in the Lord's Prayer help you focus on what's important when talking to God. Like bread and stuff. And debts. We're supposed to forgive debts, which is a terrible business practice. Well, yeah, but when I'm saying the Lord's Prayer, I try to think about each part. Thanking God for all that we have. Asking God for forgiveness. And saying how we've forgiven others. And asking God to be with us in hard times. Oh, and when we all do the Lord's Prayer together, I feel connected to everyone in the congregation. Plus, you don't have to only say the Lord's Prayer. You can also just pray, Gabe. So it's not just about saying specific words. But it's also fine if we're praying the same thing as everyone else. Feels right to me! Um, I know you all left to discuss the Lord's Prayer, but we can hear everything in the sanctuary. So if you could just keep it down. Okay! Uh, feels right to me. Leo, are you sure there isn't something I can do to help? You are helping, Gabe. Conversation, human contact, and let's not forget the importance of moral support. I know, but can't I help you actually build the robot? It's technically a robot suit. And no offense, but remember when you tried to build that doghouse? Hey, Gabe, <laughs> what you building? <laughs> isn't it obvious? Anyway? It should be ready now. Wow. Leo, is it working? Yes, Gabe. Everything is worth seeing as... Wait. Oh, this can't be right. Uh, is it supposed to do that? It's a virus. Wait. 1998. Oh, no! Not that virus! What virus, Leo? What virus? Can't stop dancing! Won't stop dancing! Virus! Ah, well, uh, that doesn't seem so. Destroy us! Oh, you must get out of here! It's out of control! Oh, the exit! What do we do, Leo? There's nothing we can do. I'm powerless in here, and you're not so great with machinery. <laughs> the virus is going to cause the suit to dance until it destroys itself, and me with it. There's a way out. Save yourself. No way, Leo. I can't leave you like this. I'm not going to abandon you. Gabe, this is not a game. Game? Game. Game! Gabe, what are you doing? Hang on, Leo. You'll be out in no time. What? How in the world did you do that? There's a level in Crash Tractor where you can upgrade the rotary tiller so you don't have to detassel all the corn by hand. But... What? Just trust me, Leo. I may not know much about mechanics, but there is one thing I'm really good at. Crash Tractor. Gabe, you... You saved me. You could have left, but you stayed. Of course, good buddy. Anytime. You have a flat tire. Oh, my game 
didn't save. We should still be doing this church lock-in, Ruby. This storm is looking pretty bad. That's why we're having it inside, Gabe. If it were outside, it would be a church lock-out. <laughs> Besides, Pastor Pete said it'd be more dangerous to go home now than to... Ah! Are you seriously afraid of a little thunder, Gabe? It's just... Ah! Ah! What happened to the lights? Hey, it's okay, Ruby. I'm sure they'll come back on any second. There, you see, nothing to panic about. I wasn't panic, Gabe. I was just... Ah! Ah! Okay, okay, we need to find some light. Do you have a flashlight, Gabe? Um, uh... Oh, that's much better. Thanks, Gabe. Uh, I didn't do anything. It's me, actually. Ah! Leo, it's Leo. It's Leo. Leo? I'm not even going to ask. It's my latest invention, the Flashlight Pointer 5000. Leo, did you make a suit that just points flashlights at other people? Yes, and now my hands are free to point a flashlight at myself. How about you invent something that can tell us more about this storm? <laughs> no need. I have this old transistor radio. And flash flood warnings are in effect until midnight tonight. Please be advised to stay indoors. Nothing, I repeat, nothing can halt this storm's fury. We are all but rag dolls in its path. <laughs> wow, that radio announcer did not make me feel any better. Ah! What do we do? That adult authority figure wasn't any help at all. Shh. Let's all just keep calm for a second and think. Oh, and if there are any animals that are outside, watch over them and make sure they get to wherever animals go in storms. Who is that? Caves, maybe? Mimi! Oh, <laughs> hi, Leo. Were you here this entire time? No, I came in and said hi when the lights went out. But you were all busy screaming, so you might have missed it. Well, there's no power, and it sounds like the whole town is going to be swept away in a flood. Is this really the best time to be praying? Um, yes. This seems like the perfect time to talk to God about how I'm feeling and ask for help. Plus, I can't pray and panic at the same time. So, it helps me keep calm in times of... Oh, calm! Stress. And God, please let no one have been hurt by that lightning. And be with my friends as they're running around the church in hysterical panic. And also make sure that there are no ponies that get hurt. And if it's possible for someone to deliver us a pizza, I just want cheese. This is great, Gabe. Yeah, I can't believe you haven't been to the skate park yet. There's lots of ramps and stuff. Perfect for practicing tricks. Exactly. My goodness, who are they? Oh, just some high school kids. They come down here too to do stunts. They are exceptionally good. I will go over and greet them. I would love to learn to do bicycle acrobatics like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jamila, maybe you didn't hear me. Those are high school kids. You can't just go over and talk to them. Why not? Because they're older and bigger, and the guy even looks like he could maybe possibly one day start growing a mustache. Forgive me for not understanding what facial hair has to do with saying hello. Are you saying they would be unkind? I have no idea. I've never talked to a high schooler. I've never seen anyone do it. They could be super mean. Who knows? Anything could happen. But, Jamila, trust me on this. We stay on our side of the line, and they stay on theirs. Everyone wins. The line? That line is to separate us from the high schoolers? That's what I assume. It's old, and we don't know who painted it. But that's probably what it's there for. That seems like quite an assumption, Gabe, but I guess you could be right. I am! Besides, we can do our own tricks over here. Really? Like what? 
Oh, just a little something I've been working on. So the theory is we use your ramp to jump over that stick? That seems rather easy. Yeah, exactly. First, we get good at jumping sticks, then we can move on to jumping buses and helicopters or whatever. That seems like a rather extreme escalation. I know, right? Extreme! <laughs> ah! Gabe, are you all right? I'm fine. Although, I'm shocked that something I built actually did what it was supposed to do. Oh no, the branch is breaking. Uh, this is not good. Definitely not good! Ooh. Ah, ah, ah. You okay? Yeah, thanks. Great. Hey, you should be more careful. That's a pretty impressive bike ramp you built. Oh, congratulations on your possible mustache. Hey, thanks. That was amazing. I can't believe those high school kids saved me. Well, we are all sharing the same skate park. No! <laughs> it was in the tree. And so, by keeping your wrist straight as you toss, you too can be a successful sower of seeds. Also, be certain to look where you're tossing. Great, Gabe! Great presentation to show the congregation this Sunday. I only had one note. What am I watching? Me telling Jesus' parable of the sower. Yeah, but you never actually told the parable. I just watched 10 minutes of you demonstrating how to throw seeds. I'll vacuum all of this up, obviously. I think you should spend a little more time telling the parable and talking about what Jesus meant by it. I think it's pretty clear that he meant for us not to plant seeds on paths or on rocks or in thorn beds. Did people not know how to farm back then? <gasps> Did Jesus teach us how to farm? What? No. People knew how seeds worked back then. That's why he made the parable about seeds. He was putting it in terms people could understand. So it's not about seeds. Enough with the seeds. Look, I'll, I'll put it in more modern terms. Think of it like social media. We'll use my favorite platform, Chirpster. Let's say I send out a chirp on my phone. It's a super important message, and I want everyone to get it. Some people get the chirp, but don't actually read it. Some people read it, but downvote it, which will count against its overall chirp points. Chirp points? Some people will get it, read it, then put a picture of a cat on it and send it out to others. But now it's about a cat or something. Okay, wait, I don't use birdster. Chirpster, but okay, let's think about a Gabe version of the parable. Um, let's say there's a sports person who wants to do a point thing, uh, then, but there's a lady goalkeeper who, you know what, I thought I could fake it, but sports are really not my thing. Huh, you know what? Jesus explains what the parable means right here. It's about hearing the word of God. Well, yeah, some people hear it and don't understand or don't have faith in it or are too distracted by worldly things. So why didn't Jesus just say that? He wanted to put it in terms people could understand. Well, I wish I'd known that before I covered the whole room with seeds. Yeah, I bet you wish you'd known that the church's vacuum is broken, too. Have fun! <laughs> Ruby, thanks for letting us take out your canoe. It is awesome. My pleasure. It was just gathering dust in our fifth garage otherwise. Um, Bert, don't you want to thank me? Bert, what's wrong with you? Bert? Huh? Oh, I didn't tell you, but I'm terrified of water. I'm freaking out a little bit right now. Scratch that. I'm freaking out a lot. I need to get off right now. Hey, hey, come on. Stop this right is the terrifying. Hey. Sit down. Bert, sit down right now. Bert, 
Why are you so scared? I've been terrified of water ever since I first heard the baby Moses story. When his mother put him in a basket made of reeds and sent him down the river. Why would anyone put a baby in a basket? In a river? Pharaoh had ordered that all Hebrew baby boys be killed, and Moses' mom wanted to keep him safe. Yeah, it was plenty dangerous outside of the basket, too. But how could she know for certain he'd be all right? She didn't. She just had to put her trust in God. And Moses was safe in the end. But what about us? What about the rapids? And the jagged rocks? And the crocodiles? What are you talking about? There's nothing here. And I don't think the Bible mentioned crocodiles. They were hinted at. Well, there aren't crocodiles in this river. There are. There are crocodiles everywhere. <laughs> There's one there. I see right. these. Well, you sit down. The canoe down. is going to fall over. If you keep standing up, the canoe will tip over. Do you want that? No. Then sit down and take a deep breath. <sighs> we're never in complete control. No matter how many precautions we take, we still have to trust in God to keep us safe. Now, don't you feel better about it? He's standing up again. Something flashed no! in the water. Oh, Give me the water. I'm going to take it out. Get rid of me. Just sit down. And... Gabe! Uh, hold on, Gabe. <sighs> Gabe! Hey, Bert. I thought we'd lost you to the river. I'm okay, Bert. I'm wearing a life jacket. We both are. Bert! Gabe! Give us a hand. Okay. Uh, All right. Guys. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Bert, come on. Yep, yeah, Bert. Come on, we got you. <sighs> are you guys okay? <sighs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, it wasn't as scary as I thought it would be. So, do you want to head back or keep going? You know, I think I'd like to keep going. Even though something bad could happen? I have faith we'll be okay. But I'm just gonna put these extra life jackets on. Bert, sit down! You're gonna take Here, just Bert, let me grab one. Like we got this? four in here that. Come on! Sit down, we're That's not enough. I need more. I need more. Wow, Pastor Pete is on fire with his sermon today. The story of the Great Commission is amazing. Wait, what did he just say? Well, Pastor Pete didn't say it, Jesus said it, but still. Go and make disciples of all nations! Wait, does Jesus mean that I should be making disciples of all nations? Yes, you! Get out there and evangelize! Go for it! Okay! All right, Gabe, walk right up to the first person you see and tell them all about Jesus. Uh, excuse me, uh, let me tell you about Jesus Christ. Huh. Uh, perhaps if they weren't going so fast. There, the movie theater. I bet there's a lot of people in there. Really? Okay. Play it cool, Gabe. Wait for your opening, and then tell her all about Jesus. One box of gumdrops, please. Here's your change. Uh, you know who else brought change? Jesus. Why don't I tell you all about him? <sighs> Miss Donaldson, I'm taking my break now. If I can't have cake, no one will! Gabe, you've been in this movie for 25 minutes and you haven't told anyone about Jesus. It just seems rude to interrupt the movie. I think it's more rude not to interrupt everyone to tell them about Jesus. It's probably what Jesus would want. All right. Attention, moviegoers! I'd like to take this lull in the action to tell you about Jesus. We're trying to watch the movie. You know who else was trying to do something important? Well, that went pretty well. Well, I interrupted their movie. You need to get out there, Gabe. No one built a world religion out of love, rainbows, and unicorns. Actually, that's exactly what Jesus did. Well, not the unicorns part. Wow, really? Yes. 
maybe when Jesus said, make disciples of all nations, he was saying that we should live by his example and invite others to do the same, not yell at people. Oh, well, how do we do that? Well, uh, what if we volunteered at that soup kitchen over there? We could help the hungry like Jesus would. And then we yell at them about Jesus? No, if Jesus comes up, I'll talk with them about him and how he's affected my life. But the main thing I'm going to do is help those people. And then afterwards, we could go back to the theater and actually watch that movie. And get popcorn this time. With butter! Sounds like a plan. Yeah! Go forth, Team Gabe! <laughs>